Hello and welcome to Infinity. I was asked several times when I produced some videos on colour models that use some fairly complex set of steps, whether we could put those into a macro. So I've done that and I've done them all together in one macro, which you can download free. It took me ages to do, but it's yours for nothing. Why do I do that? Anyway, so let's show how to do it. Um, up here somewhere, there's going to be the download link. And if you follow the link, you'll come to a page that looks something like this. And uh, this is part of a bigger website I write on persuasion and changing minds and things like that. And there are thousands of pages there, literally. Also free. And here's about how it works and the models here. So it tells you a little bit about it. And click this link here to download the model and set of macros and go back here you need the library module you'll find it if you haven't got it there in view studio library then in this you click on the little thing on the right there the hamburger is sometimes called click on import macros and you'll find your way to the downloaded macro set click on that and open and it will automatically install it here for you. Then in here we've got a set of different macros which will create the models and I'll show you what happens here. If I click RGB that's really quick and that comes up over here with an RGB layer. What it does, it does it separately from your original image so if you don't like it you can just delete it. Um, and if you open it up you will get the three uh, layers here, red, green and blue. You can look at those if I alt click those it shows what they are so if you wanted to edit those separately. Press I click the top there, hit the delete key and I'm back to the beginning. RGBW is much longer to run. If I click on this I'll show you. So now it starts thinking about it and this little timer thing comes up and it'll take several minutes even on a faster computer for it to install um, and work on this picture and it's the reason for this it does calculations um, on every single pixel and this is a high resolution image it's 42 megapixels so it's an awful lot of sums for it to do so with this by the way don't hit the escape key to get out because it will get rid of this box but it will carry on calculating anyway and it might look like the program has hung but it hasn't. So I'll let it skip forward to the end now. Okay so here we have it here's RGBW and if I open that up you've got red, green, blue and white. I've done a separate video on this which explains the detail of it but by and large it's, it's what you might expect red, green, blue and white and these combined together the white is the monochrome image so you can do sharpening and monochrome things on that change the tonality of the picture and the red green and blue you can edit separately it's very much like cmyk but only with rgb so cmy you can think in a kind of backwards way um, once you're used to it it's not too bad and sometimes it's useful but if you don't like it, it's a brutal pain anyway so here's an alternative click on that to load and hit delete then rgb plus plus w here is exactly the same but it puts the r g and b on a single layer so you can just do adjustments to the color on one layer as opposed to having to play with separate colors cmy is the same as rgb but cyan magenta and yellow and cmyk extracts out the monochrome information there in the k the black in the same way, it's kind of opposite of RGBW. And I see MYK is opposite of RGBW, but it's got the black as a separate layer and CMY in a single layer. So you've got colour and monochrome information in the those. And, and if you want one or the other, play with them, find out which one you like best. And sometimes you find one image will work better than the other. HSL, this is a kind of tricky one, which I'll do in a moment because that's hue, saturation and luminance. Um, and I'll, 
I found a way to extract that with some fancy sums. Well, not that bad. And HSL RGB is the same as HSL, but with the hue broken down into red, green and blue within that hue. So it's even more detail. So I'll click on HSL. And again, you get this comes up. Don't hit escape. And we'll skip forward to the end. OK, that one took a really long time to get through, but it got there. And look at what we've got here. Open this up and I got hue, saturation. I've got two layers here, but open this one here and there, hue, saturation and luminosity, lightness, brightness or wherever you want to call it. So alt click on the hue layer and it looks mad really. But this is, and again, there's another video on this. This is the basic color information and you can do color adjustment on that. So you could use the HSL command on this, by the way. Um, pick, say, the blue colour here and change the colour that the blue is. Saturation. Alt click that. That's a, that modifies that hue layer to change the saturation. So the whiter it is here, the more saturated it stays. The blacker it is, the more it gets kind of pulled back from that very bright colour. And you can do some interesting painting on here. So you can paint in black and white on this or on a separate layer above it. And by changing this, then you will um, change the saturation. Uh, let's try that very quickly just to show you. Let's get a paintbrush here. Opacity 10%, hardness 25%, so it's quite small. And if I paint in white, it's going to make it brighter, so almost more, more saturated. So I can paint on here. You can see it's making this here more saturated. I can so I take this here and see the way it increases effectively the color in this by changing the saturation of it. And you can go the other way by painting in black. And luminosity, alt click there. Then this is the standard, if you like, black and white layer. You can do sharpening here, noise reduction and so on. And that gives you a lot of power. Right, that is about it. I hope you enjoy the old macros. And um, thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.